Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we continue with the series Study the Classics, today with a game from Wilhelm Steinitz vs. Montgredier played in London 1863. So already quite a long time ago and we will just dive into the game which started with e4. g6, some kind of modern defense, black is just playing his bishops to yeah, g7 and later also b7, fine catering, not taking the center and white is just building up normally in the center. Steinitz, he is playing quite solid, he is putting the pawn to c3 to frustrate this bishop on g7. This is of course one out of many ways to play, maybe not the most principled one in yeah, modern times. I would say most people would play either knight to f3 or knight to c3. But anyway, this move is quite solid and he continues developing soon, which is okay. So black also fire and kettled his other bishop and white just brought his pieces on the queen side out. And even though the pawn is on c3, white found quite a nice way to organize his pieces in a harmonious way. So this knight will have a nice square and this bishop also will have a nice square. So there is basically nothing wrong with white's position. Black continued to play d6, white continued knight to f3 and black decided to fight for the center with pawn to e5. And this is the first moment where I want to give you the chance to think about the position on your own and make a decision. I will give you three options which we then discuss and um, those are closing the center with d5, taking on e5 or just developing further. Take your time, think about them, come up with something which you think is strongest and we will discuss all those moves now. So the best move and which one? Uh, was played in the game 2 is d takes e5 which practically forces black to recapture with the pawn because he doesn't want to give up this bishop because this would give white the pair of bishops and this fianchetto would be an empty fianchetto and there would be a lot of dark square weaknesses around. So he must take with the pawn but now this bishop kind of has become um, a shut in bishop and this is also not so great and white can develop quite smoothly and this bishop is out of play, white has a lead in development and white is just much better here. So as simple as this is, um, this is also very strong. So that's the best way. Let's have a look at the alternatives and why I like them less. So first, um, bishop c4 is not a bad move because bringing the bishop there is quite natural. However, maybe black has some extra options and that's why I think it's worse than taking immediately. For example, black could consider taking himself when this bishop won't be closed in forever. Also, black has the option to play maybe knight d7 and later he could recapture with the knight and after knight takes with the bishop, which also would leave his bishop yeah, um, quite active. So black is getting extra options. That's why I like this move less. And how about d5? This move is interesting, but it closes the center. And by doing this, white cannot really make use of his development advantage. And also with the center closed, black can maybe later organize his knights, play h6 to prevent knight g5 and finally push f5. So probably castling first and then f5 and um, he will try to undermine the center and build a strong center himself with the pawn on f5. So that's why I don't like closing it too much because black will have this pawn uh, break and white is not really having pawn breaks in this situation. So we continue with the game where white took, took b6, 
bishop to c4 and knight to e7. Here white missed the tactical chance. Um, he could already take on f7, followed by queen b3 check and knight to g5 attacking ideas. For example, king e8, knight g5. Also black could try to give back the piece, but white can keep the initiative going by something like, for example, castling and white is just much better there or yeah, also winning. So um, we won't go into details here, but you can figure this out on your own. In the game, white played queen e2, which is of course not the best move because white is missing this tactical chance. However, he was having a clear plan in mind and trying to follow this plan. So black just castled and here it's again a chance for you to challenge yourself, think about the position and try to find a plan as well. Um, so take your time, try to develop a plan, which means an attacking idea, some idea for the next two or three moves, not just a single move. And then um, we will discuss. So if your plan was to attack the black king, that's the way to go here. And this can be done in several ways. Um, for example, you could castle queenside and then throw the h pawn forward, or you could start with the h pawn. So if you might wonder why is it in some positions correct to advance the h pawn, and sometimes it's just very unprincipled and such play would backfire. The key precondition for a su successful attack on the wing is that the center is closed. And here, despite the d-file being open, the center is relatively closed. We still have a pawn here and we have a pawn there. There is no open e-file, there is no real counterplay in the center. The queen is not creating any counterplay on the d-file, so the situation in the center is very, very stable. And that's what yeah, allows us to attack on the wing because there is no counterplay in the center. He cannot open up anything. He cannot throw anything at our center because the, this pawn is just pinned and we will be very fast with h4, h5 and so on. That's very important to understand why we can do it here and why we cannot do it in other instances. So h4 was played in the game and it's very good. If you instead came up with something like short castle, this is actually quite a bad move because white's advantage in general is very much based on this attack because otherwise black is also doing fine. Um, he would develop his knight, then try to bring the queen away from the d-file and the position is maybe even around equal. So white really needs to play for an attack, sharpen the game which means long castle or h4. Um, some people who analyze this game, I think they were thinking that this uh, move order is a bit less accurate because knight f6 might prevent h5, but also this is very good for white because for example, I could take here and white is a pawn up and I can um, make my position more solid later. So no matter in which way you do it, um, attacking is the way to go. So we continue with the game where h4 was played and after knight to d7, Steinitz immediately pushed h5, not wanting that black can stop it in any means. So after h5, Black played c5, which seems a bit slow and white took and black took with the knight, which looks quite strange, but he was afraid of opening the h line because white can quickly attack there, maybe bring the queen over and um, with the h file open, it's very dangerous. Objectively speaking, I think both are just very, very bad, probably losing for black. 
So we will continue with the game, which did not last so much longer um, from here. After knight g5 and knight f6, I want to ask you again, how would you continue the attack? And um, I will discuss some ways now. Um, people might uh, think uh, how we could attack here and we will see um, which of them work. So first, if you were considering taking here, I think it's not the way to go. Because after taking here, um, the knights are still doing a good job. We don't get our queen, the strongest piece in to the attack. And it's not so easy to increase the pressure on f7 because I can defend quite often. And I think maybe black is completely fine here. Instead, we should really ask where is his weakest spot. And this is definitely the h7 pawn. So we should consider, can we take there? And the answer is maybe not surprisingly, yes, because we just have so many attackers around. Also, this bishop is doing a great job, which we will see soon why. So after knight h7, he's basically forced to take because otherwise we just got a pawn for free. So now, there are basically two options. Um, the first one is to take this knight and then continue attacking with queen to h5 or to start with queen to h5. Um, both are winning and um, I will show you some lines. After queen h5, knight to f6, we see why this bishop here is so important because we can take on g6 um, due to the pin and for example, if queen c8 with the idea to trade queens, white is winning with several moves, but um, the nicest is maybe rook to h7 because we're threatening mate, threatening rook g7 also. And if the knight takes, we just play bishop h6 and the queen can no longer come here because we deflected the knight, which is quite nice. Another win would be just play it slow play the rook to h4, preventing queen g4, and then bring the next rook and threaten checkmate, for example. So that's a win here, but Steinitz decided to do it more directly and capture something. Rook takes h7, king takes. This is absolutely forced. Also now the king retreat is forced because bishop to h6 would just drop two pieces because the pawn again is pinned and would just lead to checkmate. So king to g8 and white threatening checkmate here first, bringing in another piece into the attack. Black cannot really defend against a checkmate except by moving the rook. So after this, we will still take the knight. So rook e8 played and we take the knight and now after queen f6, you can try to find the final combination in the game after which black soon thereafter resigned. So take your time and we will continue with the solution now. And this is bishop takes f7. If you haven't found this, remember the rule, always start with the checks and with the captures and then you should definitely not miss this move because there are not so many checks and captures. Uh, it's maybe like five moves and you should consider each of them. Uh, after bishop f7, queen takes f7 is forced, otherwise we would win material. And now there is the nice check again. Rook h8 and the king is deflected because the bishop is pinned. And we take the queen with a material advantage and black already resigned. White could, for example, bring in the knight next and... Um, continue attacking while he's already two pawns up. So that was it. White won in a very smooth way. He understood very well when it was time to, to start an attack and when to sharpen the game. And also he understood quite well when to sacrifice. So I hope you could learn something from it. And if you have any questions or recommendations or anything, just comment below. And I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.